Okay, everyone, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Tiffany John Lewis. I am the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer with LATAN. Um, everyone, your mic is muted, but I want to give you an opportunity to unmute your mic and introduce yourselves. Um, that way we know who our audience is. Um, if you can, please unmute your mic and introduce yourself. Or Jay, can you unmute them? Hello, this is Pat Landry with Gulf Coast Social Services. Jennifer Brown with Gulf Coast Social Services. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. I hope everyone is doing well today and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join our webinar today. Well-being while social therapists with LATAN. Uh, Jay Sapp is also um, with LATAN. He's our AT solution specialist and he'll be controlling the PowerPoint presentation. This presentation is being recorded. Your microphones will be muted throughout the presentation. So if you have a question, feel free to use the chat box to submit your question. The questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Laurie, you wanna go ahead and get started? Sure, thank you, Tiffany. Um, You're welcome. Thank you for attending. I am Lori, I am an occupational therapist. And doing occupational therapists, therapy, one of the things that we focus on is self-care. So today I chose to talk about decreasing stress as part of our self-care. Next slide. Thank you. So you will see this slide again. Um, this presentation is based on CDC recommendations, meta-analysis research, occupational therapy experience, and my own personal experience with dealing with stressful events and anxiety. Um, the goal of this is to build resiliency to stress. Next slide, please. Thank you. What does stress look like? We are all going through stress, finding our new normal during this pandemic. So what do you do? Do you fight, flight, or freeze? How do you deal with your stress? Um, do you have fear, worry, and anger? Or do you have thoughts of the never end of what a all the what ifs. Are you finding that you're having changes in sleep patterns, wanting to sleep more or having more sleepless nights? Are you having changes in eating patterns? Are you eating all your pandemic snacks like the Facebook memes show or are you forgetting to eat because you're working through lunch or sleeping too much? Are you having difficulty concentrating because of the distractions in your new work environment? Are you having worsening of chronic health problems? Is the snacking leading to you gaining more weight or affecting your blood sugar because of the snacks that you're eating? Are you finding that you're having worsening of mental health conditions? Were you already an anxious person and now you feel like you're in a constant fight, flight, or freeze mode? Did you indulge in the occasional social drink before? And now it's becoming a little bit more often because you have more time on your hands. There's no judgment here. We're all dealing with stress in some type of way in this new normal. But know, you need to know your responses and know that you have the tools to fix this. You need to acknowledge where your stress is and know how it's affecting you so you can do better. Stress and anxiety can be contagious. So the CDC has this great quote saying, coping with stress will make you, the people you care about, and your community stronger. 
if you're dealing with your stress, then it's much less likely you're going to spread the fear response that you may be having. Next slide, please. So these are the key areas to, that you need to decrease your stress. In one way or another, I will speak to each of these areas, social connection and how to maintain, staying active with exercise, eating healthier foods, getting better sleep, and recognizing what brings joy, meaning, and purpose, and how all these things come together to help manage your stress. Ways to cope with stress for your self-care. You wanna participate in activities that you enjoy. What do you like to do? Or do you like to read, create art, play music, play sports, woodwork, whatever that you enjoy doing and allow yourself to be creative. In being creative, you find joy. So whatever that looks like for you. Connect with people you trust within your circle to talk about your concerns. Stay in contact with your loved ones and friends via phone, email, social media, text messages, video chats, all while physically distancing yourself. Talk about your concerns, talk about your joys. We're all human social and social beings. We need this. Eat well-balanced regular meals. Avoid non-prescribed drugs. This could lead to decreased judgment and dealing with your, with your new normal by not practicing social distancing appropriately or increasing your isolation, therefore leading to more stress. Avoid excessive alcohol use. This can decrease your immunity. Take breaks from negative input to include the news. Schedule a time to check in with the news, not just leaving it on in the background and hearing all the scary words. Make sure you're getting your information from relevant sources, such as the CDC and the WHO, not social media, which basically can just increase your fears. More ways to cope with stress. Take deep breaths, meditate, prayer, all these things that allow you to pause and be present. Get regular sleep. Be grateful. Once again, pause and remember the things that you are grateful for, for your health, the health of loved ones, hearing the voice of loved ones, the sun shining on you, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and move, do exercise your way. Know what triggers your stress and when to take a time out. Can you recognize when the pressure is mounting so you can take a moment, leave the room and, and take a breath. And when you need to, seek professional help when you're overwhelmed so that professional can help coach you in how to decrease your stress in your individual life. Be kind to yourself. This is what this is all about, is being kind to your yourself to decrease your stress. I will talk about a few more of these in detail. Next slide, thank you. There are many types of meditation. Um, meditation, prayer, and mindfulness all use the same four common elements of what I found is included in meditation. A quiet location with few distractions, if, if at all possible. Um, a comfortable posture. Is it gonna be sitting, lying down, wherever you are most comfortable? A focus on attention, specifically to a chosen word or a set of words or an object or the sensations of breath and an open attitude. Be nice to yourself. Let the distractions come and go and go naturally without judging them. Mindfulness is just paying attention, experiencing your environment with all of your senses. When you get that feeling of being overwhelmed, just to sit. If you're outside or inside, what do you see? What does it sound like? What does it smell like? Are there any tastes involved? Take a moment just to enjoy and be present. 
Find the joy in simple pleasures. Watching the wind blow. Once again, it's just taking a moment to pause and be grateful. Focus on your breathing. Think about just natural breathing as sitting there and feeling the breath come in and go out. And just doing this for a few minutes may help. There are different meditation apps that I've used in my practice as an occupational therapist. And one of my favorite ones is the body scan meditation because it just calls attention to each part of your body so you can help relax. There are so many meditation apps out there. Try one, try a few of them and figure out what works for you. And lastly, prayer. You may or may not be a religious person. However, all religions have some form of prayer that you have learned as a child and grown up with. And this is a form of meditation. Sit and just think about each word as you pray. It's a form of meditation. Diet. Food is medicine. The fruits and vegetables that you eat all help your body maintain and create an immunity to everything that's out there. While your comfort foods may, may make you feel better temporarily, how does it affect you? Does bread or pasta make you fall asleep or increase your moody, moodiness because you're tired? I know in the past it has definitely done that for me. I love red beans and rice. I had something I grew up on but I know I can't have the rice because I want to go to sleep and it makes me moody. So how does food affect you? You may want to use a food journal to know what are you eating and how it's affecting your mood. Eat in regular intervals. Just as medicine, if you skip a meal, you are affecting your blood sugar. It you are going to most likely get more moody and more frustrated. So use food as medicine. Eat at regular intervals. Stay hydrated with water. Dehydration can lead to confusion and mood swings. Sleep. Sleep is very important. Here I have young adults and older adults needing seven to nine hours of sleep. The older adults, 65 and older, needing seven to eight hours of sleep. Getting sunlight allows you to sleep better at night. Limit your naps to only 30 minutes. If you're gonna exercise, exercise four to six hours before, to, before bedtime, and we'll talk about exercise a little later. Avoid caffeine. This can increase your feeling of anxiousness. Avoid nicotine and alcohol at least four to six hours before bedtime. Lower the room lights and using blue light blockers or avoiding technology before bedtime will also help you fall asleep at night. The ideal room temperature for sleep is 60 to 60, 67 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have sleep disorders or insomnia, or insomnia causing medication, talk to your doctor about it. See how, what you can do to improve your sleep. So what is your bedtime routine? I know I have suffered from spurts of insomnia. I started with unhealthy routines that I thought were helping me, but it led to restless sleep. Now my routine includes a warm shower, lavender soap for aromatherapy, cutting off the Netflix, drinking, maybe drinking some chamomile tea, a sleep meditation, and getting underneath my weighted blanket. All these things help me decrease my stress and anxiety. So what does your routine include? Does it include a warm bath, shower, calm, calming music, prayer, calming yoga poses? Do the things that you need to do to let your body know it's time for sleep and do those things daily as a ritual. Exercise. 
what is your why? The scientific reasons behind knowing your why is chronic stress is toxic to the body, leading to decreased immunity. Inactivity and decreased physical activity can lead or worsen your chronic diseases. According to the Louisiana State Department, those with diabetes and high blood pressure are increased risk of complications from COVID. So this is your time to choose a healthier lifestyle. Exercise gives you a break from your current situation. It increases your brain health by increasing the circulation to your brain, which overall in time will lead to increased memory, memory regulate your emotions, increase your learning, increase reasoning, increase your reaction time, and it's a natural mood booster. Exercise increases your motivation for initiating, initiating other healthy habits, such as maybe eating more nutritious foods, better sleep, and overall increasing your overall health. So basically, you need to know your why. These are the scientific reasons for your why, but what is your why? If you know your why, you're most likely to stick with exercise or creating a healthy environment for yourself. In one single session of exercise, you can decrease state anxiety. State anxiety is that immediate moment where you are that you're feeling anxious because you have techno technology stress. <laughs> so that one single session of, of exercise can help decrease that. One single session can improve your sleep and in some aspects of cognition as well. Regular exercise over time continues to improve your sleep outcomes, your sleep quality, and reduces your day daytime sleepiness. Regular sleep reduces the long-term feelings of signs of anxiety for people who have an anxiety disorder long-term regular exercise improves cognition and improves your overall quality of life. Next slide, please. So what is needed for exercise? Research shows that 2.5 hours a week for moderate activity and 1.7 hours a week for vigorous activity for the average person. Moderate activity is doing an activity that you can carry out a conversation, but you won't be, will not be able to sing at that time. Vigorous activity is increasing your heart rate a little bit more and increasing your breathing a little bit more. So you can have a conversation, but your sentences will be much shorter. If you can maintain an activity for 10 minutes, it shows beneficial effects. If you're inactive, Start with five minutes and eventually increase to 10 minutes over time. Some increase in activity is better than no activity. Once again, of the above are just recommendations. Talk to your health care provider if you don't feel like you're physically fit or you have concerns on your exercise needs. And the, the most important thing that's needed for exercise is you and your creativity. It doesn't have to look like everybody else and their exercise, lifting weights, running, jogging. It's whatever you feel exercise can be for you. Next slide, please. Exercise your way. What do you have in and around your home? Do you have a water bottle? Do you have a ball, kitchen counter, garden, chair, a bag of red beans and rice, any food in your pantry, and how can you use this as part of your exercise program? What's your schedule like? Do you have those extra five, 10 minutes in the morning, five or 10 minutes at lunch, five or 10 minutes at dinner? If, those, if you do those incremental and intervals of exercise, it leads up to those 15, 30 minutes of exercise, eventually leading up to that 1.75 hours or 2.5 hours of exercise that shows to help decrease your stress. 
So once again, what does your exercise look like? What do you want it to look like? What activities do you like? Do you like gardening? Do you like dancing? Do you like running, lifting weights, or a bottle of water? Do you like playing with your kids or grandkids? I like the talk and walk. I have a friend who will get on the phone with me. So I'm her buddy, and she walks around her house at a moderate pace, and we talk for 10 minutes, and there she's got her 10 minutes of exercise. Or does your exercise look like household chores? It's whatever, it's up to you to decide what your exercise looks like. Whatever increases your heart rate and increases your breathing for five to 10 minutes and eventually leading to that 2.5 hours a week will help decrease your stress and anxiety. If you're experiencing decreased mobility now, do it to a prior diagnosis. Reach out to your doctor, reach out to a physical or occupational therapist that maybe you've had in the past and see how you can incorporate more exercise into your day. So this is the slide we started with. Resiliency. Stress can lead to fight, flight, or freeze response check in with yourself just as you would with a loved one check in the first one on the first right hand side something's up be aware of your feelings pause and think about it what is it are you feeling frustrated are you feeling worried are you feeling fearful what do i need to do did i drink enough water did i skip lunch today did i not get enough sleep did I hear too much noise, too much news in the background with those scary words? So what's your plan? What are you gonna do now? Are you gonna go take a walk? Are you gonna go sit outside and pause and be grateful? Are you gonna do something creative? Are you just gonna find something to laugh about? Get on the internet and find funny cat videos. And then, hey, I can do this. And in, on the other end of it is, I got through it. I got through that anxious moment and that, that moment of fearing, feeling fearful. This is self-care. Take care of yourself. All of this information, now what? M many of the things we talked about are connected. Just start with knowing your why. Pick one healthy start that can lead to other healthy habits. Do it daily so it becomes a habit. Be kind to yourself. You may have heard a lot of this information before, and some of you, it may be new for you. It just may serve as a reminder of all the tools you already have in your toolbox, the things that you already know. Remember those tools, pull them out, be aware of your stressors and use the tools to help you feel better and decrease your stress. Decreasing stress is critical self-care for, for you, your loved ones, and your community. Thank you for attending. Are there any questions? Hey, Lori. Yes. Hey, this is Pat with Gulf Coast Social Services. First off, thanks thanks for this information. I think it's great. Um, our, our agency, we basically take higher caregivers to go into the home to work with people with disabilities. And I think talking about stress is fantastic. I think the biggest one that we're seeing right now is just fear. You know, fear of the virus, fear of what's going to happen, are they going to catch it, going into these people's homes. But they also have to deal with that with the clients, too, because the clients have that fear. But I was looking. Oh Lord, hang on a second. Yes. Okay. But I was looking at the, the some of the things that you were talking about. And exercise, I think, would be great. Some of our clients have limited to no mobility. Do y'all have any resources for some maybe examples of some exercises that we could pass on to our staff for people in wheelchairs or who have limited mobility? I would be happy to do that. If you would leave your email, I can definitely forward you some exercises. Excellent. Excellent. Yes.